Welcome to another demonstration. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to turn a standard uh, buck controller into an MPPC controller. Uh, these controllers control a, a solar panel's input voltage uh, at the power point and uh, that's where you get your maximum power transfer and it doesn't allow the panel voltage to drop. It monitors it and if it uh, starts dropping the voltage it reduces the drive to the switcher that's on the uh, board. Uh, this is an XL4015 and uh, this is a fairly useful little device. Uh, these are less than a buck and so I'm going to show you how to make a linear current booster for running a pump or a, a fan or anything else that's, that's motorized and the same technique uh, this can use, be used as a a cell phone charger to get the maximum current in from a panel without uh, putting the can panel into a death spiral. As you can see right now, uh, we got 18.8 uh, .8 volts in. Uh, this is coming from a power supply with supplying 19 volts. These resistors simulate the solar panel. As you draw more current, uh, the panel voltage will drop. So we're at five, five and a quarter volts, which is what you'd want to charge a, a cell phone battery with or not lithium pack. And we have this motor spinning, and this is also connected to a uh, electronic load. So right now, uh, watch the panel voltage and watch the uh, voltage going to the motor. Okay, so the, we've set the panel at about 17 volts. As you can see, it's maintaining that. The motor, motor voltage is dropping, dropping. And right now, uh, we're drawing uh, 1.5 amps at uh, just under 2 volts. And as you see, uh, when this thing goes into limiting, uh, this little LED will come on. So you can just watch that again. Watch the motor spin up, and we're transferring the maximum amount of uh, power we can get from the panel by keeping this voltage at the panel uh, pretty much constant. The panel voltage will change with temperature a little bit, but within a season, and generally with, uh, unless you have extreme temperature drops like going into freezing, uh, that'll be close enough, and it, it keeps the panel from going into a death spiral. Uh, wattage is uh, volts times amps. The panel is pretty much constant current. It's a current source and uh, the watts is uh, volts times amps. So if you drop the volts you're going to lose a lot of power. So here we go back up. So that's the demonstration part. Let me explain how the circuit works. And turn this stuff off. You have the basic board. On the board you have a little pot that you can adjust the voltage with. Uh, it's this pin you want to connect on to, but you can set up the board for 5 volts, 12 volts, 10 volts, whatever voltage you want. And then look at these pins. It'll be the pin with the lowest voltage you want to connect to. Make a solder connection. Uh, this should be about 1.25 volts. That's the reference voltage for the chip. So we come in and we sample the panel uh, through this voltage divider. Uh, FETs are pre pretty much non-linear, the power FETs. And so they transition at between 3 and 4 volts. So we just use that as the reference. You know eliminating the need for zeners and things like that. It's close enough and so when the voltage gets higher these turn on and when it turns on this uh, FET pulls down the current from this resistor and what we have is either a diode or an LED here. If this voltage goes high it's going to fake this uh, buck converter into thinking it has 
too high a voltage on the output and it will shut itself off. Now the diode or LED prevent, if this is uh, at a higher voltage on the panel, this will be almost a short and this prevents the diode or LED prevent uh, the voltage that would normally be going to the chip from being shorted out. So you need a diode or LED. The LED is kind of nice. Uh, it gives you a little bit of visual but you're not putting much current into it so it's a little hard to see but it would be very useful in setting up the thing initially. So, you know, rather than, uh, I could use a, a transistor or an LM431 here. Uh, I have a scrap box full of stuff. I can get any little FET I want, except I don't have any little small signal FETs, you know, the ones that are in a transistor size. So, uh, it works fine with this, even though this is a, a 20 amp FET and we're only doing a couple milliamps through the FET, this works. So remember, you want to keep your panel at uh, the power point voltage that's usually listed on the uh, back of the panel. There'll be the maximum voltage that it'll put out, and then there'll be the maximum power point voltage. And you want to set the voltage for somewhere around there. You want to have an input capacitor, uh, just because the ones on the board are are pretty minimal and they're expecting to see a, a very low impedance source from some other power supply or, or battery. So this is it. Uh, they're easy to build. Just one little solder connection, a couple little parts. Hope you find this interesting.